Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude and today's deck opening is for Keith Philibin. All right, good luck to you, sir. Let's see what today's deck will contain. We've had quite a bit of like Overlord Greckings. Had a lot of Exhumes. There's a, quite a bit of different things we've been, so I guess we've been finding a lot of Dis. it feels like. And a little bit of Mars, let's see. Oh, we haven't hit, hit too much Sanctum in here. Why'd I open it that way? That's fine. Let's see what we have here. I guess we'll pull it out this way. Logos is the first house. Sanctum, okay. And Untamed. Bishop the Traitor of Cities. That's a cool name and wow. Gosh, these last couple Archons have been really neat looking. Love all these like, like ice crystals type things up here. Look at that, man, it looks mean. Oh, actually it looks real mean unless you picture this as the eyes and it's got like a huge face maybe. But if uh, you picture it up high and this is like its body, which I'm sure this is its body, this is its head. That's a, yeah, that's a tough fellow right there. All right, let's get to the deck. All right, and starting off with Untamed, it's Perilous Wild. One neighbor to every plate, destroy each elusive creature. Pan Paka Jaga, three power skirmish. Creatures to the left of it in the battle line, gain skirmish. Oh, Pan Paka Anga, you have both of them. Creatures to the right of Pan Paka Anga in the battle line get plus two power. For those of you that don't know, interesting note on these two cards, these actually symbolize Richard Garfield's twins. So these are uh, supposed to be like his kids versions of the cards. It's kind of cool. And uh, I've never actually seen a deck with both of these, so yeah, I like that. Niffle Grounds, it's an artifact. Amber and every play. Action, choose a creature. For the remainder of the turn, that creature loses Taunt and Elusive. Mimicry, very nice. When you play this card, treat it as a copy of an action card in your opponent's discard pile. Amber Spine Mongrel, three power, hazardous three. After your opponent uses a creature to reap, gain an amber. Pretty good. They're everywhere, Amber and every play it. Deal two damage to each enemy flank creature. Deal one damage to each enemy creature, not on a flank. Rust Nar, four power. Fight, destroy an artifact. If the artifact had an amber bonus, you gain that much amber. I like already seeing some artifact control in your deck. Regrowth, Amber and every play it. Return a creature from your discard pile to your hand. Grove Keeper, three power. At the end of your turn, give each neighboring creature a plus one power counter. Thing House, three power. Assault, three. Hazardous, three. Darna, two power, play, gain one amber for each damaged friendly creature. Reap, heal two damage from a friendly creature. Now we're on to Sanctum, it's Mighty Lance. Play, deal three damage to a creature, and three damage to a neighbor of that creature. Card's actually pretty good because a lot of cards can't hit the three damage threshold, and the fact they can do it to two creatures, one that's neighboring the other, is pretty powerful. Sigil of the Brotherhood, it's an artifact, amber every play it. Omni, sacrifice it for the remainder of the turn, you may use friendly Sanctum creatures. Oh, Hadroth's Wall. It's an artifact. Each friendly flank creature gets plus two power. That's pretty good, especially because you have two different cards in Untamed that want to be on either side of the flank. So to put them up to five power and seven power respectively is pretty good. Take Hostages, one amber in every play. For the remainder of the turn, each time a friendly creature fights, it captures one amber. Two of those. Smite. Ready and fight with a friendly creature. Deal two damage to the attacked creature's neighbors. Shield of Justice, Amber and every plate. For the remainder of the turn, each friendly creature cannot be dealt damage. Maruk the Marked, five power, one armor. After he prevents damage with its armor, capture one Amber for each damage just prevented. Like seeing capture inside Sanctum. Child the Safeguard, four power, two armor, deploy. And Taunt, love that you're able to just kind of put it anywhere in the battle line and be able to protect a creature. Bordan the Redeemed, three power, elusive. Action, capture two Amber. The more I see Bordan, the more I play with it, the more I like this card. Oh, and you got Aubade. Four, power one armor, play, capture three amber, reap, discard one amber from Aubade the Grim. I am such a big fan of this card. I can't believe this actually got printed whenever you compare it to other capture cards. It's so much better on so many levels. I'm just really impressed with that. And you have two of them. Wow, okay, that's really cool. Now we're on to Logos, Scientifical Hack. 
It's an artifact, and whenever you play it, Omni, you sacrifice it. For the remainder of the turn, you may use friendly artifacts as if they belong to the active house. The only artifact I can think of that isn't Omni in here so far is Nipple Ground, so maybe you can get some use out of it. This card has always been questionable to me. I'm not sure how great it is. Um, I haven't really looked to see what powerful effects you could do with it. I guess if you have this in a shard deck, that could be really cool. Oh, Harland Mind Lock, one power, play. Take control of an enemy flank creature until Harland Mind Lock leaves play. Love putting this next to a taunt creature, so you take an opponent's creature for hopefully an extended period of time. Seismo and Tingler, it's an artifact. Action, choose a house. During your opponent's next turn, creatures of the chosen house cannot be used to reap. Okay, that's something you can use with a scientific hack. Because now you can be on a non-Logos turn. This has an Omni effect and it allows you to use your Seismo and Tangler. That's pretty nice. Jar Goggle. Two power elusive. Play. Put a card from your hand face down under Jar Goggle. Destroy it. If it's your turn, play the card under Jar Goggle. Otherwise, you archive it. Ooh, Fetal of the Researcher. One power elusive. After a creature's played adjacent to Fetal of the Researcher, draw a card. I like this card quite a bit. I love that it's elusive. It usually sticks around to be able to reap, and the fact that you're drawing some additional cards is very cool, especially with deploy effects. Titan Mechanic. Six power. While it's on the flank, each key costs minus one amber. Titan Librarian, four power at the end of your turn. If Titan Librarian is not on the flank, archive a card. Oh, Professor Sutterkin, two power reap. Draw a card for each friendly Locos creature. Igor, two power play. Look at the top three cards of your deck, add one to your hand, and discard the others. This card is so much better than people think it is. Like, even if people think it's good, it's even better than that. I love the ability to go through a deck faster, find important cards for a matchup, and Igor does do that for you. And you have two of them. You keep getting multiples of some really good cards in here. Cutthroat Research, Amber and play it. Steal two Amber if your opponent has eight or more Amber. Last card is Archimedes, two power elusive. Each of Archimedes' neighbors gains destroyed, archive this creature. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is obviously count up the Amber. And there wasn't too much Amber control, but you did have big ones, which is what matters. So let's go through this real quick. Only two in Logos. Okay, not too many there. Um, you might actually be able to get multiples off this thanks to our bigger Sanctum creatures. And we have other effects making creatures bigger to begin with. The wall in the Pampaka that does it, so that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's count up the Amber. We got one, two, three, four, at least five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ooh, eleven is it's kind of low, but this deck isn't really about the amber. This deck seems to be quite a bit about the board state and the different effects that you can do with that board state. So let's kind of look more at... Actually, let's see. Let's pull up all the artifacts real quick. So you got Niffle Grounds, yeah. Sigil. The Hack, and I don't think there was any other artifacts. Just want to double check it real quick. Oh yeah, Hadros Wall, okay, but that's not really a one you can use, which is the main thing I was looking for. Yeah, so the, the hack, you're already able to use Brotherhood on any turn, but uh, yeah, being able to use the Entangler could be pretty nice. And Nipple Grounds, you never know. So I do like that a little bit. I think I would have rather seen just about any other card here in Logos, actually. Um, I, I mean, it still gives you the Amber, it still has some effects. It's just kind of questionable how often it's gonna work or what it, it's gonna do for you. Uh, destroying each elusive creature, you have to question whether or not you're going to use this. You had a couple decent ones like Fila, you don't want to get rid of. Archimedes, you don't necessarily want to get rid of. I mean, yeah. Don't think you're going to be too much into those. Jargoggle, yeah. Well, actually, it'd be funny to actually be able to not have to call Logos to fight with Jargoggle to then be able to play the card underneath. You might be able to actually do it on an untamed turn, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's actually look at the Amber Control. So it's not too much. I think it all pretty much fell inside of Sanctum. Take hostages, obviously good, because you have some resilient creatures, especially protecting them is nice. Once again, it's Amber Control. It does take Amber away, but it doesn't actually take them off the key. I guess we can kind of count it. Not really, though. I'll put it up with it. Aubades are fantastic. Bordan is good. Maruk, he might be able to pull a few Amber away from our opponents. And this isn't Amber Control. Oh, that's Amber Gain, actually. So I'd put it up to 12 for Amber Gain. In a weird way, is kind of Amber Control because your opponent is really worried about reaping. They're going to have to do a couple fights. 
they might actually lose like one or two amber uh, that they would have actually gained and they can't get it because of the amber spine mongrel. That's interesting to think about. But definitely Maruk, Fordan, two Aubades. So really, oh, okay, and take hostages. So you have essentially six cards here, all of which are in Sanctum. How many Sanctum creatures did we have for that take hostages? You got four. Hmm, oh, there we go, five. So I thought there was at least one more, okay. So five creatures, decent odds you might be able to take hostages. For sure get one, good chance of two, lesser chance of three, but that's not bad, especially if you can protect them with the uh, the shield of justice here, because that means they can fight all to their heart's content. They're not gonna take damage, they're gonna survive longer and, and actually hold on to that amber, which is pretty nice. Let's check out the creature count. Wow, it seems like quite a bit. All right, we got one, two, five, 10, 15, 20. Wow, 21 creatures, interesting. So this deck with its lighter amber and not so great amber control, I feel like you want to play it a little bit slower as far as how fast you're gaining your amber. I think you should really build up a board position first. Call two or three houses before you essentially start reaping. Build up a massive size board. I mean, you have quite a bit of creatures in every house. Seven, you have eight, nine creatures just alone in Logos. Wow, that's actually pretty good. If you can get a couple Logos turns where you're not really generating too much Amber, you're up against the big steel deck, they're not gonna be able to steal anything from you, right? You start plopping down these creatures and some of these also help you get further into finding more of them like Igor does, Sutherkin does. And you, the fact you have two Igors, Titan Librarian can help you archive to get a little bit further in. Jargago gets a card out of your hand to get a little further in as well. But yeah, oh, actually real quick, could you imagine stealing a Taunt Creature with Heartland? That'd be pretty awesome. You steal a Taunt Creature, then put it next to the Sutterkin. You also still have the Taunt in here just in case to pair with that Sutterkin. But yeah, if you get just like four or five of these creatures out and then you start reaping for four or five a turn, it is really hard for opponent to catch up if they're relying on steel to get a majority of their amber. So that's pretty good. And you do have ways to make them survive longer. The plus two power with Pampaka here and the Hadros wall doing it as well is pretty nice. You do have ways to slow them down if they have a little bit of amber generation outside of stealing. Thanks to Maruk, Bordan, and Albaid the Grims. Yeah, take hostages. So it's actually not too bad. It's just all about getting it set up and having some big explosive turns. Also, whenever I'm talking about a big explosive turn, you have quite a few Logos creatures down. Maybe you have two or three Sanctum creatures. Use the Sigil Brotherhood. That could easily be like an eight amber turn just from reaping with those creatures. So yeah, uh, kind of interesting. I think another important note that you have with this deck is I think there's creatures in here that your opponent has to deal with. And because of that, that will automatically slow your opponent down a little bit. They're not going to have to deal with these, but they're going to have to deal with Archimedes, Librarians typically. Feel of, they're going to want to get rid of that. Heartland Mindlock, depending on what creature you steal, they'll want to take. I mean, there's a lot of creatures in here that forces your opponent to deal with them. And whenever you're doing that, you are slowing them down, so I like that quite a bit. There's at least one, two, three, maybe depending on their deck, we won't count that, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That is a big number, okay? Really think about that. I, th I think a lot of people miss that whenever they are going through decks. If you have that many creatures your opponents have to deal with, that's a big advantage. I said, that is just gonna naturally slow them down. I said, if you can just build up that board and get some, a lot of big reap turns, that's awesome. And you have the Entangler as well to help slow them down. That was actually Amber Control as well. All right, guys, uh, the rating on this deck, uh, it just, it really depends on what style deck you're up against. Rush decks are going to give this a big problem if it's a really fast one with some cheek eating and stuff, making it where your captures aren't quite as good. Whenever you look at your opponent's list, if you do see that they have a key charge or a chota of some sort, sometimes it's okay to just capture maybe two amber with your Aubades. You know, use Bordan a little bit more often to take them off that amber so they can't just immediately key charge and then potentially make the card sit in your hand even longer so you're not getting value out of it. All right, so uh, as I was saying, the rating for this deck, I'm going to have to give it a C plus. It could be a B minus if your opponent is really relying on the steel like I was saying earlier. All right, guys, well, thank you very much for watching my videos and I will see you next time.